A young man stands at his bedroom. It just so happens that today, the 13th of April, is this young man's birthday. Though it was 13 years ago that he was given life, it is only today that he will be given a name. What will the name of this young man be? You choose to enter his name. Zeus Mel Poop Lord! Try again, smartass! John Egbert. Yes, let's go with that, shall we? John Egbert decides to examine his room. Your name is John. As was previously mentioned, it is your birthday. A number of cakes are scattered about your room. You have a variety of interests, but you have a passion for really terrible movies. You like to program computers, but you are not very good at it. You have a fondness for paranormal lore, and you are an aspiring amateur magician. You also like to play games sometimes. What will you do, John? John will quickly retrieve his arms from the drawer. Your arms are in your magic chest, Poop Lord! Remove the cake from the magic chest for him. Out of sympathy for John's perceived lack of arms, you pick up the cake for him and put it on his bed. John quickly retrieves his arms from the magic chest. You receive your fake arms from the chest. You use these for hilarious antics. You capture lock them in your Silidex, but you have no idea what that actually means though. There are other items in the chest. Go on John, look inside that chest. In here, you keep an array of humorous and mystical artifacts, each one a devastating weapon in the hands of a skilled magician or a cunning prankster. You are neither of these things. Among the artifacts are two fake arms currently capture logged in your Silidex, one pair of trick handcuffs, one stunt sword, one magician's hat, one pair of beagle puss glasses, several smoke pellets, several blood capsules, and one copy of Colonel Sasuke's daunting text of magical frivolity and practical japery and one copy of Harry Anderson's Wise Guy by Mike Caveney. Some of this stuff may come in handy at a later point, but for now, you just decide to take the smoke pellets. You stow the smoke pellets on one of your capture log cards in your Silidex. You still aren't totally sure what that means, but at least you're starting to get a hang of the vernacular at least. You have two empty capture log cards remaining, and John tries to equip his fake arms. You aren't totally sure if equip is the verb copacetic with the abstract behavioural medium in which you dwell, but you give it a try anyway. Unfortunately, you cannot access the fake arms. Their card is underneath the one you just used to capture lock the smoke pellets. You will have to use the pellets first in order to access the arms, but this is probably unadvisable since you just make your room lousy with smoke. Your Silidex's fetch modus is currently dictated by the logic of a stack data structure. You were never all that great with data structures and you find the concept puzzling and mildly irritating. But with any hope, perhaps you will advance new more practical fetch modi for your Silidex with a little more experience. John chooses to look at his problem sleuth poster. Is it even possible to get any more hard boiled than that? <laughs> you really doubt it. This poster was one of your wisest purchases. There is a nice spot on the wall next to it, and you've been meaning to hang another poster there soon. But there is a note on the drawer, and for now you should probably read it. Happy birthday, son. I am so proud of you. The note is rich with the aromas of fatherly aftershaves and colognes. Beside the note is a rolled up poster. Take the poster. Another birthday artifact. You wonder what is printed on the poster. You'll need some way to hang it on your wall. You should probably acquire some hammer and nails as they will come in handy, especially for just such an occasion. You first place the hammer into your Silidex, but for now all of your capture log cards are full. You wonder what will happen if you try to take the nails? I guess it doesn't hurt to try. You capture log four nails into the top card and push all the artifacts down a card. The fake arms are pushed entirely out of the deck. Oh well, they're probably completely useless anyway, but you don't want to do that again unless you want to drop the smoke pellets and suffer the consequences. In any case, you feel like you have gathered enough things to get down some business and do some really important stuff. The next thing you do will probably be exceptionally meaningful. And suddenly it passes through his mind that he should squawk like an imbecile and shit on his desk. This is the dumbest idea you've had in weeks. Stupid, stupid, stupid. And yet, the polished surface of your desk. It beckons. Instead, you merge the top two cards, combining the nail with the hammer. The hammer and nails are now capture logged on the same card and can be used together. And now this places it in an ideal position to use it on the poster. You use the hammer and nails in conjunction with the card beneath it. Now you may nail the poster to your wall. 
You use the hammer, nails, and poster on the blank space on the wall. Oh, it's glorious, exactly what you wanted. The old man really came through this time. But for now, John chooses to examine his Con Air poster. Put the bunny back in the box. I said, put the bunny back in the box. Why couldn't you put the bunny back in the box?